Now that we have submitted assignment one, we go to our next use of compositing, and this is getting away from the concept art of setting and towards the concept art of creature or character design. Just like for our landscape, we're going to start with a sketch that's going to be the blueprint of what we composite with and what we put together. And because this is deeper into compositing, we do have a question of the day for this unit, which uses our required reading of chapter two to actually learn real information in our free online textbook, which is linked in the, in the course outline, for Creative Commons, for copyright, for public domain, for fair use, all these reasons and concerns and understandings you need to have to be an artist that uses found images whether it's digital or whether it's traditional. And that is due uh, February 13th, so we have some time, but do be aware of it. There's a video that uh, a student from a few semesters ago suggested, and I thought it worked well to give some background information. And then I also have a, a presentation with some slides about appropriation that can help inform your thinking and might aid our classroom discussion on that next week. Okay, for this assignment, we wanna design a creature that we understand the anatomy well enough that we can animate it later and have its parts believably move, right? So, how do we start that? Well, the trick is with creature design, it's all about silhouette. It's about the shape they cut as a shadow on a wall. And if that silhouette isn't clear and doesn't give us a sense of the three-dimensional anatomy of that creature, then we want to pick a different pose for designing that creature. So we're gonna use Pokemon, or I'm gonna encourage you to use Pokemon as inspiration. You can do any kind of fantasy creature you want, but to understand how to pose something in a way that we can see it seemingly from all angles, from just one vantage point, Pokemon is a really good especially the early designs, a really good template to start with. So some of these are clearly based on Pokemon. Uh, others might be combinations of different ones. Others might be just from other ideas, but informed by how to do good concept design in silhouette. You can see lots of past examples. You can see past playlists and tutorials. Let's go to where we actually post it. So here... I give you some inspiration. The requirements are basically the same as for the landscape. You need at least 300 pixels per inch at eight by 10 inches. We're gonna work maybe a little bit larger than that for my class example. Uh, we're gonna source our images to be at least a thousand pixels. You know, again, Pixabay is a great resource for this because we're mostly looking at kind of animal photos and Pixabay has a lot. Um, but using large according to Google image can also help. So for instance, this Pixabay image, which is almost 5,000 by 3,000 pixels, we might use this for the, the spinal ridge. We might use it for the eye. We might use it for the bottom jaw. There's all kinds of ways we could use this one resource. Now, this is where we get started. Instead of looking for resources first and then doing our sketch based on those resources, we're going to sketch our idea first because finding resources for this has everything to do with making it match the angle of our anatomy. You can base it on any inspiration you like. Maybe it's Greek myth mythological. Maybe it's the Dungeons and Dragons monsters handbook. Maybe it's you've always wanted to combine, you know, marshmallows with kittens and this is your chance, right? But the trick is how do you sketch it in a way that we get a sense of the dimensions of all the aspects of that design. So for instance, if it's something with two fins and a tail, how do you make sure you show the length of the creature while also showing both fins, right? And usually that means a three-quarter view <laughs> in some way, whether it's three-quarter view front, three-quarter view back. Very seldom is it a front-on view. And very seldom is it a full silhouette view 
where we're seeing it just from the side. So imagine this horse, but if we only saw two of the four legs, right? So inspiration such as this, I'm just going to zoom in on this and maybe pick one. And sometimes I combine multiples. And you can also think of your landscape and what would kind of fit into it. I always wanted to do something kind of foxish or kittenish. So maybe a combination of this kind of thing with uh, something that goes well with vegetables. I wanted kind of to, to be made out of candy aspects. So something a little harder edge. So maybe this kind of thing. So I'm just going to do a quick screen grab of some of these silhouettes that might be helpful. Like maybe this body with this head at least in terms of angle. And I'll show you what I mean. So it's good to have some sort of inspiration. Already just from those poses, even just from their shape. So this is a Pokemon that this student was inspired by. They went ahead and reduced it to a black silhouette. And then this was their final composite. And you can see how inspired they are by that silhouette. And that helps us understand where the rib cage is, where the shoulders are, where the hips are, how long the tail is, where the spine goes, how everything would pivot. It's just a good way to go. But that's inspiration for what I call a basic shape sketch. So I actually give you some step-by-step -step instructions here since you'll be doing this, and this is new for a lot of you, and hopefully doing it before next class. So first thing we want to do is sketch. So I'm gonna, I just opened up an 8 by 10 by 300 space in Photoshop. I have my tablet. I'm going to use the brush tool. I'm going to shrink these tools a little bit. So I have a little bit more working space. All right. I want to set my brush always to be pressure sensitive for size. There we go. Okay. So and I can do it on a different layer just because. First thing I want to do is bring in my inspirations. You can be looking at these on your phone while you sketch, whatever it might be. I often find combining two keeps me from being too literal about matching one. Now the first thing that matters for creature design is the focal point of the creature. And usually the focal point of the creature is the head of the creature, right? And the focal point of most vertebrates and like insects is the head. So the sh basic shape that makes up the head is what's called the cranium. So the cranium shape in these Pokemon designs is right here. It's basically like the, the fish bowl that holds their brain. The secondary head shape is called the mandible. It's a dynamic shape. It changes with angle and it changes with movement. So you got the mandible here for that creature. You have the mandible here for this creature. Now why I don't like this head so much, though I do kind of like the ears, is that the head's just pretty much facing forward. So I don't get a sense of the mandible moving out and forward at all. Whereas here with the three-quarter view, you can see where the middle of the head is and the angle what's called the direction lines of the face. So what I'm going to do is start by drawing my cranium and mandible. And if you have no better inspiration, you can always just start with a circular cranium. Right? And then my mandible, I want it to be a little bit longer. I can already start thinking of animals that might Give me something like that. A little squared off. I like that. And now, when I say draw with basic shapes, what do I mean? Basic shapes are circles, ovals, squares, rectangles. Triangles. And that's it. You can make any two-dimensional shape by layering those up. Right? To speed things up in creature design and character design, I add a wedge, which is like a triangle with its head cut off. 
That could be made up of three triangles, but it's a pain. Right. So let's see what we can do. So I've got some a circle. I've got basically an oval here. We're going to get used to overlapping, what's called drawing through, like you're drawing an x-ray. I'm going to take the opacity on my brush down a little bit. And now I want to show the direction line. So I'm going to draw the line right down the middle of the face. Like if you were to take a Sharpie and just draw right down your nose. That shows me the angle at which this character is looking. And then right through the eyes. So this character's head is facing this way down at three quarters and to my left now connected to that is a spine and i have to figure out the spine connects at the back of the skull just like ours i have to figure out how long that spine is <laughs> the difference between a kitten and a cheetah is how long that spine is the shapes are all the same so it's just the proportions so if that's about the length of my spine because i'm thinking kind of kitten and cutish then I find how long the neck is by finding where the collarbone is going to be on that spine. That's the basically the space between the two shoulder joints. I'm going to be inspired by this and keep those shoulders pretty close together, make little balls, and then draw the length of my legs separated by the equivalent of an elbow joint. And I don't need to draw the legs together. I can maybe show them a little bit apart. So that shows me the length of the neck. That flows into the rib cage, which goes between the collarbone, right? The rib cage is never going to be super long, right? And it's never going to be spherical. It's always going to be rib cage shaped. <laughs> so that kind of shows you how much space you have to play with. Now, the space between the bottom of the rib cage and the hips the hip joint, which is just like the collarbone, but connects the legs, that's the length of the waist. A cheetah has a very long waist. A kitten has a very tiny waist. An alligator has a very long waist. A snake has the longest waist, right? So it's the distance between those joints. And I want to make sure that I understand how these joints work. And it's a little complicated. The reason I'm showing you kind of the kitten shape is that looks like it's just this. Like a backwards bending leg. But that's not how the anatomy works. And if kittens had that, they wouldn't be able to move very well, right? So instead, what I'm actually seeing is, I'll zoom in on, it's not Evie. It's the little, what's the pre-evolution of Evie? Anyone? We'll call it kitty, but whatever this is, the joint is there, but the, the femur, the top leg bone, actually goes forward, and then it goes back, and then it goes forward. And what we're seeing at the bottom, which looks like the bottom of the leg, is actually the equivalent of our foot. And they're standing on their toes. So it's what's called a haunch. So first I draw a short femur, and then a joint, and then the fibia and tibia, which is our lower leg, then going into the tarsals and metatarsals, our foot bone, then going into the toes, the phalanges. You don't need to know a lot of anatomy and physiology, but you do need to kind of understand how that works if you're going to move this creature and pose this creature in ways that are believable. So that looks a little weird there, but when it gets wrapped in muscle, when we're compositing and when I'm looking at wolves or kittens or foxes or wherever I'm going to get my composite material, it's going to wrap around it like this. Oh, let me get a color. Where you have kind of a haunch and then a leg. A haunch and then a leg. And then a tail that extends from the spine. But it's important to understand the anatomy before you get obsessed with the silhouette, right? That's the anatomy that matters. The rest is about the silhouette shape you want. So I want a little bit of a harder edged head. So I do like the ears. I do like these little flares. I'm not quite sure what I'll get those with. I'm thinking I want kind of candy-ish shapes. Um, I do want maybe a cotton candy tail. So. I'll